Let's face it, we should already know that the climate is changing. We've all heard the science. Human activities are increasing the levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide from pollution or methane in mass animal farms, trap the heat from the sun and cause extreme temperature variations around the world. As temperatures increase, ice caps melt. Sea levels rise, weather patterns become more irregular and the greenhouse gases make the oceans more acidic. We pass these facts around and warn others about it. But do we really know how it really affects the world at large? Sure, less ice isn't great for the polar bears, or an acidified ocean is bad for the fishies. But let's not restrict our worldview. It's important to understand that climate change affects our biodiverse ecosystem around us. Now what does that mean? In order for an organism to survive, its surrounding environment must be suitable enough for its species to thrive. A changing climate means a changing environment, and if the environment of an organism changes too much, the organism might be unable to survive. So, it either has to move, adapt, or die. When a species has to move, it has to leave its previous environment in search of a new one. As much as this is good for the species to survive, it is just as bad for it to migrate around. For example, if an entire population of a country decided to move to another country, what can happen is a conflict between those already living there and those that have moved. Sound familiar? In terms of biodiversity, if an entire species invades the environment of another, what you get is competition between them, and anything can go wrong. So it can be difficult for a species to move, and adaptation can take many years to occur, most likely slower than the rate at which our climate is changing. So, what we end up with is a lot of species shuffling around, either dying or barely surviving. Now, how does that affect us humans? We've all heard the story that if bees become extinct, it's going to make life on Earth really difficult for us humans. That's because a lot of flowering plants and fruits depend on bees, and a lot of animals, not just us humans, depend on those flowering plants and fruits. Formally, this is known as our dependence on ecosystem services, and those services aren't just the food we eat. There are also natural resources, cycling of minerals and nutrients, regulating the planet, and even societal and cultural aspects like parks and recreation, religious sentiment, knowledge and inspiration. So really, us humans depend a lot on having a diverse ecosystem that are required for us to live as we do today. And so, if the changing climate changes the environment, and the changing environment changes the diverse ecosystem around us, the changing biodiversity makes things really hard for us humans. So what can we do to stop this? One solution provided by scientists is that we should learn how we control our land. That is, we should stop treating a patch of land as an isolated system. For example, as if just the actions in one neighbourhood, city, or even a farm only affect itself. In reality, an action here can greatly affect another over there. This is known as a landscape conservation approach. Different landscapes can be classified according to its sensitivity to the changing climate, and hence, different actions can be taken to conserve biodiversity and a landscape according to its exposure to climate change. Using this information, authorities and conservationists can better understand how the climate affects one landscape and these actions needed to mitigate those effects. And that's just one solution. The main thing we can take away from this is that everything is connected. We need to stop thinking about the divide between the changing environment and ourselves. And we need to start thinking about how our actions in one respect can greatly affect another. So the next time you warn others about climate change, don't just tell them about the polar bears. Tell them that if we don't take responsibility for our actions today, the world as we know it will look very different tomorrow. And say goodbye to the plants and the animals that we all know and love.